Did you know that you can use astrology to figure out why you've been struggling to manifest something? There are two culprits that I've found in my own personal birth chart that have kept me from manifesting something, even though I've been putting a ton of energy in the right direction. And chances are these two aspects or planets in your chart are limiting you too. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Isabel, your spiritual rebel friend. And today I want to talk about the two culprits in your birth chart that are keeping you from being able to manifest something. Now, while I'm doing this video, I am going to be heating up my breakfast and making myself some boba because I'm going climbing with my sister and multitasking is my life as a Mars in Gemini. So before I dive into this video, talking about the two culprits specifically the two planets that you should look to in your chart that are keeping you from manifesting your desires. If you're struggling with manifesting your desires, whether it's a relationship or a career, make sure you hit the link in the description below to book your reading with me, where in one hour we dive deep into your unique birth chart and how you can use it to understand yourself, get the things you want in life, which is what we're talking about today or even just find more clarity on your purpose in life. So look in the link in the description below. Um, can't wait to work with you. And so I wanted to talk about manifestation today because I noticed for myself as a constant manifester, as we are constantly creating our realities and how I'm avidly focused on manifesting certain things into my life, like more money, more in my career, just constantly seeking more because that's what we do as human beings. If we're not growing, we are shrinking as Jupiter and Saturn talk about. And so I wanted to talk about what I've noticed for myself as I'm trying to manifest how there is, you no, know, we can be putting a lot of energy in the right direction and you can ignore the sound of my water pump. Um, we can be putting a lot of energy in the right direction as I've noticed for myself, really being proactive, putting in the right vibration, but still feel like there's this stuck energy. Obvious, and it's obvious because you feel like your manifestation hasn't manifested. And I noticed for myself, so while I'm putting energy into the right direction and things aren't manifesting and I'm wondering why, and you know, it's not like, um, I don't think with manifestation, you know, it's all vibrational. Well, not all. There's some level of action, but action in alignment with your vibration. Um, while it is very much vibrational, it's not either, I think, right vibration, wrong vibration, because we have, you know, 24 hours in a day. And I think there's times where we are very much in our vibration. You know, maybe when we first wake up, we are very actively focused on being in the right intention, but there's a lot of gray space moments. And identifying astrology has really helped me identify what those misaligned vibrations are using these two specific planets. So the two planets I recommend you look at if you are stuck in your vibration, if you are stuck with your manifestation, things aren't coming through is Saturn and your moon. Now, ironically for my own chart, these are in the same one, which in the same sign, which accentuates it. But I think for everyone, this plays a role. As I've noticed with previous clients, friends, family members, these two planets could be the reason you're struggling to manifest. And here's why. Let's first talk about Saturn. Saturn is kind of the obvious culprit because Saturn is the opposite of Jupiter. And Jupiter is all about expansion, abundance, the law of attraction in a way at its finest. Spiritual growth equals physical growth in life. The more we raise our conscious uh, level of consciousness, the more we raise our vibration, the more we receive. And I love Jupiter. I know my own Jupiter placement. Jupiter can help you if you're stuck with manifestation um, when you want to add more. But I do think on the other note with Saturn, this is something that in a, gets more in the way, so to say. So Jupiter expands, Saturn contracts. Saturn is literally named after Kronos, the law or the God of time. They think that everything's linear. We must have contraction. We must have control. We must have everything rigid and structured. Um, you know, the ruler of Capricorn who persists up the mountain to get to their goal rather than seeing that they can bring the mountain to them, so to say. 
Saturn believes in the material reality. Saturn shows us what our shoulds, woulds, coulds, have tos are. And so looking at your Saturn in your chart, you can see how, what your beliefs are about how the world has to work. So for me, I'm gonna have a bit of a biased or odd interpretation, so to say, because my Saturn and moon are in the same sign, but still nonetheless, it applies. So for me, I'm using my own timer to know how long I need to put this in. So for me, my Saturn's in Cancer, which for me brings up a lot of beliefs about when I'm persisting forward towards goal, oh, I should be more nurturing. I should be more caring. I should take care of myself more. I'm going to be too sensitive. I'm going to be too delicate. I'm going to be not strong enough, so to say, are some of the beliefs that come up for me with a, the, uh, sorry, um, a Saturn in Cancer. Saturn literally shows us how we think the world works materialistically. In a simple sense, just pondering the themes of Saturn can be helpful without even knowing your Saturn placement. How do you see the world as linear? Do you believe everything has to take time or can you just focus on the vibration? Like I said, Jupiter and Saturn are this yin and yang. So if you're trying to recognize Saturn energy, incorporating more Jupiter energy into your life can help. For me, I do think of it as while my Saturn at times can help me regulate myself I also do know that incorporating more Jupiter overall helps me with my manifestations. My Jupiter's in Virgo, which means the more I can have routine and tasks and be linear about fulfilling my sense of purpose since it's in my ninth house, helps me. The more I get to be task oriented, service oriented. So Jupiter can help with your manifestations, but recognizing your Saturn, Saturnian, is that how you'd say that? thought patterns really is beneficial. Yes, I want to note that, or I want to note that at times, yes, Saturn can be helpful. Saturn can help us when we need to take care of ourselves, regulate ourselves, take a step back, reassess um, ourselves when we're burnt out because after all, Saturn is like contracting a muscle. It can help us strengthen our spirits. But overall, it oversteps its boundaries in modern day society. As far as I've noticed, everyone we see life as material. We're generally, as a collective, disconnected from the spiritual side of our being. We think that everything has to be hard work, hard earned, live the grind in order to have anything in life. And it's annoying. Um, so overall, Saturn is oftentimes a culprit for our manifestations. We think we have we have all these beliefs about how things should work with our manifestations. In the simplest sense, you're, what could be limiting our manifestations the most is just when we go, well, it's not supposed to happen yet, or that it shouldn't be that easy. Everything should be easy. Life is meant to be lived joyously. The only reason we think we should have struggles is because we are uncomfortable with not knowing our, our, our danger. It's a primal instinct, but we're, not, we're meant to grow to be past primal beings. So to say, I cannot get this open, but I feel like it's open enough that it's going to start leaking. So we're going to just pour that in there and then we'll move on to the moon sign. So again, I'm kind of biased in a sense because my moon and my Saturn are in the same sign, which helps me just identify how my emotions can keep me limited. But for everyone, our moon sign can be a culprit, which I know sounds weird. Like Isabel, my emotions. My emotions are actually like a good thing. Isn't everything supposed to be emotionally driven for our manifestations? Shouldn't we feel emotionally um, excited and connected to our desires? Yes. But oftentimes your boba won't leave its packet. And while your moon sign is your positive emotions, what you need for emotional fulfillment, it is also not where my knife is. It is also our emotional pattern. So for me, as a moon in Cancer, while I'm emotionally fulfilled by, and I emotionally need to be nurtured and cared for and care for others and give, um, for those who are wondering, I don't own scissors. <laughs> Cause I'm sure you, someone's gonna comment on this video and be like, what are you doing? My best, Tom, that's what I do. 
Um, if you didn't understand that reference, you're probably really confused. Anyway, so moon sign. Your moon sign is oftentimes, you know, what can be getting in the way of our manifestation because we repeat a habitual emotional pattern and your moon sign can tell you what that habitual pattern is. You can, of course, identify what your emotional pattern is without knowing your moon sign. It just helps me personally because it's simplified and linear and just tells me what it is and it gives me a starting point. So for me as a moon in cancer, I, while I need nurturing and care, I also tend to repeat this pattern of I'm going to be too sensitive, I'm too delicate, I need nurturance rather than seeing that I provide myself that. It's basically our victim mentality, but that's also because the moon is not just our emotional needs, it's our inner child. And the child doesn't know any better. And it thinks that it needs the adult, whereas really we are supposed to be our own adult and provide the things we need for ourselves. So your moon sign can tell you what you're repeating. If you have a moon in Leo, you're probably telling yourself that no one sees you um, and that you must fight to be seen. If you are a moon in Virgo, that accentuation of you have to work hard in order to earn anything can be accentuated or that you're hypercritical of yourself. If you have a moon in Libra, you're going to constantly struggle with feeling disconnected or unimportant um, or like you have to be fake with people. Basically, your moon tells you your story while it is, though, also your emotional fulfillment. So trying to identify what is my emotional desire, how can I connect the positive of that emotional desire to my manifestation and what how what are the patterns and pitfalls that I should be aware of to avoid. So for me, I can go in the end as a moon in cancer. I want to feel nurtured. I want to feel secure. I need to have that care, but in the negative, or that would mean I need someone to provide that for me or a career will give me that security. And instead I have to already embrace that. I provide for myself. I am supported divinely by the universe. The universe has got my back. I always can take care of myself. I always have enough. Um, I do not need someone to provide that for me. Um, if I let that fall into the negative, I would end up limiting my manifestation by going, I will not feel nurtured or loved until I have a relationship. I will not feel nurtured and cared for until I get validation in my career. So basically it's just the basics of manifestation, but using Saturn and the moon can give us a starting point on what exactly those negative thought patterns could be. What are your negative thought patterns on how the world should work? And what are your negative thought patterns about how you will be happy once you get the thing and that you need the thing rather than being the thing already? Hopefully that all makes sense. Let me know in the comments below what your Saturn and moon are and tell me if you can figure out how that plays out for your manifestations. Was this insightful? Were you limited in a manifestation? Reflect on what is it you've been trying to call into your reality? How's that been limited? What is your emotional moon desire? What is your Saturn beliefs about how the world should work? Are, is there a correlation? Are those limiting your manifestations at all? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And stay tuned for more videos breaking down who you are, as well as me just sharing more of my personal insights from my own life. Because in the end, this is not me just reading from some book about all these personality types. This is what I've learned from experience. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I sincerely hope this helped you with your manifestations and stay tuned for more videos breaking down who you are. Namaste.